the first data structure that we are moving on is with the arrays what are arrays they are group of elements which are of similar type so it is essentially a group of similar kind of elements group of similar elements right the similar means same data type in our case so the data type could be anything like if i want to declare an array i can say that i have an integer array now i want to make it a group so i use square brackets and within the square brackets i mention the index now here the here i am mentioning the size of the array and when i will be using i will be using it as the index so supposedly i want an array of size 10 i can also initialize the array here using curly brackets and the array elements separated by commas it can be an integer it can be a character and if i am initializing along with the declaration if i am initializing along with the declaration then size is optional that means i can mention that char supposedly s yes, is equal to now please make sure that i am mentioning them separately here in a single quotes because i am mentioning an array of characters or it is a string so automatically hello and since it's a character string uh, backslash zero or null character would be added by the compiler to us so it will automatically be done so this is how we can initialize and we can declare arrays i can simply declare without initialization also like i can say float f5 this is only declaration what will happen after this declaration after this declaration the compiler will create a space for f and it will create five float spaces that can be indexed that can be accessed with the indexes 0 1 2 3 4 4 now index for arrays always begins with 0 there is a reason for it and we we'll look at the reason very soon so if i want to give some value in f first location so what can i do f of 0 that is the index i am mentioning is equal to 12.5 f of 1 is equal to 6.3 or i want to read the values so i can simply do if i want to read the values i can go in a loop and i can read the values so if i want to initialize the values within a loop i can say supposedly i am declaring the float f to be element to be an array of five float numbers so i am taking here for integer i Is equal to zero. Zero. I is less than five, and I plus plus. I am taking it from zero to n, and this is less than n, not equal to n. And I am reading the value using normal C in f of i. So from the user, all the values have been read. If you want to print the values, you can print in a similar manner. For i is equal to zero, i is less than five, i plus plus. you can print the value or you want to add the values whatever you want you can do it with the values you can print the value supposedly separated by a space and you can print f of i so the values would be printed so this is how arrays can be created used manipulated these are all what we are currently seeing are single dimensional arrays we also have multi dimension arrays which we will be looking at very quickly so these are all single dimensional arrays only a single index is there only a single list is being created now how is the list stored in the memory so if i look at how the list is stored within the memory if i want to have a look at that so we have to understand that when i am declaring any integer A five. If I am only declaring any integer A five, what happens in memory is there is a memory space supposedly starting from one thousand. Then, since it's an integer, supposedly on thirty two bit compiler it takes four bytes. The next address is one thousand and four. The next address is one thousand and eight. Next address is one thousand and twelve, and final address is one thousand and twenty. 
So the array is beginning from 1000 to 1023. The byte address, right? So how do I calculate here? So address of any array location can be calculated as ad, or I can say address of a k right it is equal to base address this is representing the base address plus width this is the size of data type on that particular compiler how many bytes is that particular data type taking multiplied by k index jo aapko chahiye right so if i am calculating address of a supposedly 3 that will come out to be the base address plus size of data type multiplied by 3 this comes out to be 1012 so if you go to 1012 this is a of 0 a of 1 a of 2 a of 3 a of 3's address is 1012 this is how arrays are represented in memory. They are always stored in continuous memory. They are accessed using continuous memory locations. They might be stored generally C, C++, everywhere array, arrays are stored in continuous memory locations only. But it is not a compulsion. But whenever we are using this, we will be using this as if they were stored in continuous locations only. So to us, they are visible only as if they are stored in continuous memory locations. So how do I pass arrays to any function? How do I do that? So supposedly I am given some function prototype. So the function prototype is supposedly it is returning an integer. I am having add array as a function supposedly. So I have to add all the elements in an array, supposedly an integer array. So I am taking integer, this is the array and I am taking another integer. This is only the prototype. I have only declared this function here, right? So after declaring this function, supposedly I am having some void main. Within my main, I am creating an array and I am using something. So supposedly I am creating an array A10. And I'm taking some i and I'm taking some initial sum is equal to 0 as well. Now, what I need to do is I need to read the elements and then I need to sum them. So, to be able to read the element, first of all, I'm saying kindly enter the elements. So, I'm saying enter the array. After mentioning that, let us read the element so for i is equal to 0 i is less than 10 and i plus plus i am reading the elements of the array one by one by one a0 a1 a2 a3 a4 a5 a6 a7 a8 a9 as soon as i becomes 10 it comes out of the loop so the 10 elements from 0 to 9 are read here after reading, I need to call my function. So what is the function? I'm saying sum. Since it is returning something, I'm saying sum is equal to. Here I'm giving add array and I'm passing the entire array. How do I pass the array? A. A is the array name. So I'm passing A. And what is the size of the array? I'm taking the next as the size. So I'm passing 10 as the size of the array. This is the number of elements in the array that I've passed. And finally, I can print sum of array, sum of elements in the array, whatever you want to print is equal to. And you can print the sum that has been returned from the function. And you close your main. So this is the way in which you will be able to see how you have calculated the sum. Now we need to define this function. How do I define this function? Here I am not using any pointers. Please see this clearly. I am not using any pointers yet. I am out of space so I am using this space of the board. Technically the program now following is after this. So I am having, I am defining the function. So I am having integer add array 
in this I am having integer. I'm I can take any name. Supposedly, I'm taking some z. And here I'm only given square brackets. I'm not mentioning any size or anything. And I'm saying int n, which is technically the size. Right? So after giving the functions, and now here the function definition will begin. So I need to calculate some sums. I'm saying that integers s is equal to zero, and I'm taking some, I'm taking some i, and I'm making s is equal to zero. Okay. So we'll be using them. So what? How we'll be using them? And I'm running for i is equal to zero, i less than n. I know the size i less than n, i plus plus. What I need to do? S plus is equal to z of i. I just have to do sum plus is equal to every element one by one by one. I'll just show you the running. And finally, after the loop is over, I will do return s, and this is the function of what the program is doing. So let us see what will happen when we start executing the program. So supposedly the program starts execution, so you get printed enter the array. After entering the array, supposedly the entered array is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Supposedly these are the elements that you have entered. So after entering, you call sum is equal to add array a ten. Now here you have not mentioned the square brackets in the function call. Function declaration and function definition. Have the data type and the array name here with empty square brackets, and here you are just passing the base address of the array. Then in the next, I'm taking the size of the array also. Okay, so here i and s have taken the array is passed in the function parameter using this. After this, I am running the loop. Now for i is equal to zero, here i is equal to zero initially. I less than n. N is ten. I less than ten is true. I plus plus to baad mein hoga. S plus s is initially zero. So zero plus is equal to z of i. Z of zero is one. So zero plus one becomes one. Increment i. I becomes one. One less than ten is true. Come here. One plus z of one. So one plus two. This becomes three. Again increment i. I becomes two, two less than ten is also true. Come here, sum plus is z of this is zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This is my index, and this is my array, right? So now at index two, I have three. So sum plus three is whatever is existing plus the new value. So three plus three, sum becomes six. Again, go i plus plus i plus plus i becomes three. Three is still less than ten. The condition is true. Continue the loop. Sum plus is z of i. Sum plus is z of three is four. So sum plus is six plus four. It becomes ten. Again, increment i becomes four. Again, four is less than ten. True. Four plus five. So sorry, s plus five. Ten plus the next element five becomes fifteen. Again, continue with the loop. I becomes five. Again, here fifteen plus six s sum becomes twenty one. Again, go ahead. I becomes six still less than ten. Then you have i of six plus sum so twenty one plus seven becomes twenty eight. Again, increment i becomes seven. Seven is still less than ten. True. Again, sum plus is equal to z of seven. Z of seven is eight. Twenty eight plus eight becomes thirty six. Re go i plus plus i becomes eight. Eight is still less than ten. Again, sum plus is equal to z of eight, which is nine here. Z of eight is nine. So thirty six plus nine sum becomes forty five. Again, go back. I is incremented. I becomes nine. Nine is still less than ten. Is true. Again, go ahead. Sum plus is z of nine. So sum plus is forty five plus ten. It becomes fifty five. Again, go increment i plus plus i is equal to ten. Ten 
less than is equal to less than 10 becomes false 10 is not less than 10 10 is equal to 10 it is not less than 10 so we come again here and we return the value of the sum which is 55 so finally sum is there we have the sum of elements is equal to 55 is printed. So this is how in a single dimensional array, you can pass the array as a function. You can traverse the elements. Now this, all of you have already done. We know. After knowing what the data structure is, we want to perform various operations on the data structure. So the various operations that have to be performed could be insertion. Insertion could be at the beginning of the array. It could be at the end of the array. It could be at a particular position in the array. Right? Now whenever we want to insert anything in the array, the array must not be completely filled. Agar pani ke glass mein pani bhara hua hai, to aap aur pani nahi bhar sakte. It will fall out. That is not what we want. So, before insertion, we have to check for the overflow error. Overflow error has to be checked for. Similarly, there is an operation called as deletion of an element from the array. Again, deletion can happen at the beginning, at the end or of a particular element. In either case, we, uh, you have to check for underflow error. Underflow error ka kya matlab hai? Array should not be empty. Agar khali array hai, so you would not be able to delete anything. So if the array is empty, deletion is not possible. The array should not be empty. So whenever we have to do an insertion or a deletion, we do first an overflow or an underflow error check, then we move forward. So let us see the insertion at the beginning. So we are doing insertion in arrays and now we are looking at insertion at beginning insertion ahead. So insertion in arrays is the topic. Now here I am having the array. Supposedly I am having integer a5. Right? And I have made a of 0 is equal to 1. a of 1 is equal to 2. Only this much elements I have filled, rest the elements are empty. In the A array, rest the elements are empty. This is the filled array. Now I am saying, I am calling some function insert array and I am calling insert in the beginning of the array and what do I want to insert? Supposedly 10 has to be inserted. So I want 10 to be inserted at the beginning. So to insert 10 at the beginning, what I technically want to do is since there is space in the array, there are empty elements in the array. Either you can initialize them to be zero so that you know that they are empty. So since there are empty elements in the array, what you need to do is you need to shift the previous elements. So when you are shifting the elements, zero the elements needs to be shifted to first. First needs to be shifted to second. But if we have the one ko 2 key place to copy kar diya, 2 will be overwritten and will be lost. So we don't want to do that. So first of all we shift 2. So 2 is shifted here. So this is the new array currently. Then 1 is shifted here. So we have shifted the array. Then we do the insertion. Once we have got this kind of array, then we do the insertion at the beginning. So that the final array that I will be having will be 10, 1 and 2 and rest two locations are still empty. So this is how I need to do insertion at the beginning. That is, I need to copy each and every element by one space and then I need to copy at the beginning of the array. So let us see how this can be done in programming. Let us see this. So we are having, what I am having an insert function here. So insert at beginning, it is a void insert at beginning function. So, and I'm having only the element to be inserted and the array in which I want to insert. So I'm having integer array, the element to be inserted and integer size of the array. Currently, the size is the elements are inserted with. 
that is the size of the arrow. Okay. So I am going to insert if size is less than is equal to some max possible limit of the array. Let us say we have defined hash define max to be 10. So ki maximum 10 elements are allowed. Currently, jo bhi size hai. if the size is less than equal to max only, then you can perform or you can check it opposite manner. If size is greater than equal to max, then you need to just print overflow error. Insertion not possible. This is an overflow error. And you need to return without inserting, right? If that is not the case, else, else, what you need to do is, otherwise, else, you return or job automatically, you will come to this condition here. So now, what you need to do is, you need to shift every element space. So what you need to do here is, for integer i is equal to you have to start from size, last element. So i is equal to size. Supposedly it is having technically size minus 1. Agar i is 6 elements, then fifth location you have to start from. Or you can begin with i is equal to size. I will tell you why. And you have to do i has to be greater than or equal to 0. Greater than 0. First element tak jana hai aapko. i minus minus. What you need to do is array of i is equal to array of i minus 1. What have I done here? I'll just say. And after you come out, array of 0, that is the first location beginning, is equal to the new element. And you are done. Let me just write the main of the function, then we'll see how it is going to be executed. So I'm having my void main. Within the main, I'm having some integer a. Supposedly, the size here is 10, the maximum size that is available. So, and I'm equating some elements here. I'm taking int size, which is initially 0. I'm initializing the size to be 0. So, whenever I'm doing an insertion, I should increment the size. Correct? So, it is currently 0. So, I am asking the user, supposedly insertion is required. So it is not a menu driven program yet. So I'm doing insertion. I'm doing A of 0 is supposedly 10. A of 1 is equal to, and I'm doing size plus plus. Every time I'm doing insertion, I'm doing size plus plus. A of 1 is supposedly 5. Again, a size plus plus. And I'm having A of 2 is equal to supposedly 20. Again, a size plus plus. Now I'm calling insertion at the beginning for some elements. I'm calling insert at beginning. The function is not returning anything, so I'm not returning anything. And I'm passing element, array, and size. So I'm passing element. Supposedly, I want to insert a 25. I'm passing the array now. Array is A. And I'm passing the size which is stored in size variable. So this is what I passed. After the insertion, I can display the array. And after insertion, I will do a size plus plus also. Please understand, right? So after the insertion is happening, I'm doing the size plus plus. And uh, I am for i is equal to 0. i plus plus, sorry, i is less than size i plus plus. Here I am printing C out. Space they can supposedly I'm printing array elements. So to that I know the updated array is this much. And I close my main. I'll explain the running. I am explaining the running which is. I am explaining the running which. So let us see what is happening. We begin the execution at main. So a10 we have declared. So there is some array a of 10 elements. 
starting from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 10, 9th element. 9 index, which is the 10th element. So I have this. Now I'm saying A0, and I'm having size to be 0 initially. So I'm having a size variable, which is initially having a 0 value. I'm saying A0 is 10, so I'm initializing the value here of the array of A0 to be 10. Then size is incremented, so the size of the array becomes 1. Initially the array was empty, now the size is 1. Next time again I'm adding an element to the array, I'm again incrementing the size. I am again adding an element at the second index, it is 20. So again the size is incremented. Now element is having three elements. The array is having three elements. Now I go for insertion 25 A and size. So 25 gets copied in the element. Array gets now uh, array is also representing to the same location as A and size is represent as copied value as the same size which is 3. Now size greater than equal to max 3 greater than equal to 10 false so i will not come to this condition the condition becomes false come out for i is equal to size now i is equal to 3 initially i is 3 i greater than 0 is true array of i array of 3 array of 3 which is currently an empty location is equal to array of i minus 1 so this 20 would get copied Array of i, that is array of 3, is equal to array of 3 minus 1, which is 2. So, array of 3 is equal to array of 2. 20 gets copied in this location. I again go here, i minus minus, i becomes 2. After i becomes 2, I again check 2 is greater than 0 is true. Array of i, array of 2 is equal to array of i minus 1, which is 1. So array of 220 is replaced by array of 5. So this value is replaced here and this becomes 5. Again go i minus minus i becomes 1. 1 greater than 0 is still true. Array of i is equal to array of i minus 1. So this becomes 1, this becomes 0. So array of 1 gets the first element now. This becomes 10. This is replaced by 10. Now, technically, I have shifted all the elements and this location is now free for storing the new element. So, I say array of 0 is equal to element. Element is having a value 25. So, array of 0 gets the new value 25. So, this is my new array. When I am printing C out space and A of I, what will be printed? I will be getting 25, 10. 5 and 20. Achha, size 3 tha, wapas ke baad, size 4 ho gaya. So I is running from 0 till 4 and we will be getting the core elements. So this is how insertion at beginning in an array is done. Is this clear to all of you? When we are doing insertion at end in an array, we already have an array again supposedly A is there from 0 to 9 elements. Currently, I am having supposedly 0, 1 and 2 already filled up spaces. Some 10, 5, 20 are filled. I want to add some element at the end of the array. So, if I know the size of the array, I can simply add something at the, this location and increment the size. If again overflow error has not occurred, if the array is having some space, I can do that. So, the simple code, the very simple code that is available for this is if I write here is I need not move anything not required here what can I simply do is I am calling in void insert at end again I need to know the element that is to be inserted I need to know the array and I need to have the size of the array right again I will be checking if size is greater than is equal to max, then insertion is not possible. I would not insert. I need to hash, define, this is a macro that is there. I am defining max to be 10. And since it's a macro, I am not taking a semicolon, right? So, if size is greater than max, then what you need to do is you have to print the correct message. 
you need to insertion not possible after printing the error message you need to return from the function so you are returning otherwise what you need to do is you need to do the insertion so you can simply do array of size jo bhi element hai size location pe that is equal to the new element and you can technically here only do size plus plus but since i am not doing it here i will go to main void main and i am creating an array integer array of again 10 elements i am saying that integer array sorry i am saying array of 0 is supposedly 100 size plus plus every time i insert i have to increment the size technically size plus plus should happen here so if you want to do that you just make sure that this is only a reference to the original so you can take this as a pointer and here you can do value at size you can do that value at size is equal to value at size plus 1 so the value will get incremented before returning from so the size will automatically get incremented here in the function only if the max condition was false only then this would happen right so you are doing size plus plus you have to declare a size initially which is equal to 0 again doing array 1 is equal to say 50 again doing the size plus plus now supposedly you are calling insertion at end you need to pass the element that you want to insert you need to pass the array and you need to pass the size now since you are expecting a pointer this should go as the address pointer mein to address hi jayega na so since a pointer is given so the address should be mentioned here and finally you can print after the increment you can print the array for integer i is equal to 0 i is less than size i plus plus see out and you can print the array of i finally you are done with the program this is how you can print the entire program if i am to dry run this program what will happen in this case is i am creating an array 10 so there is an array of 10 elements which is created from 0 1 2 till 9 all the elements have been created over here after the elements have been created i have a size which is initially a 0 then i am having a0 is 100 so 100 is getting stored over here size is incremented to 1 i am getting a1 to be 50 size is incremented to 2 i am calling insertion at end element gets 80 array becomes this array and address of the size variable is passed here which is having the value at 2 so again i have to modify this as value at size so make sure you do the modification value at size is greater than is equal to max 2 greater than 10 is false i'll come out array size again this has to be array value at size so array value at size is value at 2 value at second location okay. is equal to element so this becomes this 80 and after that value at size is value at size plus 1 so the value of size increases to 3 now you come back from the function int i is equal to 0 say less than size tak ye wala size variable koi pointer nahi hai function mein pointer tha jo local tha i less than size i plus plus print array of i so you will be getting 100 50 and 80 to be printed this is how you can do insertion at the end within an array in case i want to insert after a particular position that means supposedly i am having integer array say 5 and i am having some elements 0 1 2 3 4 tak and i am having some elements already stored here say 10 5 6 
these are stored and i want to insert at second look or say first one position okay i want to insert at one position in the array one index in the array so if i want to insert at this position what do i need to do jahan pe insert karna hai wahan se end tak ke sare elements ko one one place shift karna padega obviously check the overflow condition if it is satisfied that means overflow is not occurring then shift the elements till the position so 6 would be shifted here 5 will be shifted here and whatever the new element supposedly say 20 that will be copied in the new location so if you want to insert at a particular location you will have to shift the rest of the elements in the array so let us see how this can be achieved inserting at a particular location within an array so since you are inserting at a particular location i am having a void insert at a particular location again the parameters remain absolutely the same so i am having element that is to be inserted then i need the array in which insertion is to take place and i need the size of the array and i am taking a pointer to the size of the array right so that i can manipulate it within the function itself here since i am having it here first is to check the overflow error so i am checking if value of size is greater than is equal to max in case in that case what should happen is i should print the overflow error and i should return and i should return from the program if it is not happening then i should shift all the elements till the location at which i wanted to insert and then uh, the elements instead of the element sorry please make a change this should be the location at which the insertion is to be done so i know the location the element i do not know yet either i can pass the element here or i can ask i can take an integer element and i can read the element to be entered i will read only if the overflow error is not happening right so after i know i will now shift and i will place the new element so for shifting i am having for integer i is equal to 0 now here oh, sorry i is equal to location i from location till size to so, mujhe kya hai size se shuru karna hai and i want to reach till location so understand the concept here jab aap program khud banaoge suppose it is 1 2 3 4 tak hai size currently is 3 size is currently 3 suppose aur mujhe insertion karni hai location 1 pe so what i want to do 2 should move to 3 1 should move to 2 so i am doing i is equal to size i is 3 2 se 3 pe jaye 1 se 2 pe jaye i greater than location not greater than equal to greater than location and then i will do i plus plus i is equal to size i greater than location i plus plus what do i need to do a of i is equal to a of i minus 1 so i will be doing a of i a of i minus 1 after that i will do a of location ya a of i kyunki wo equal to location ho jayega us time pe jab hum loops acha जब हम रूप से बाहर आएंगे तो आई लोकेशन एक एक्स्ट्रा में रहेगा दैट वी डोंट वांट एंड सॉरी दिस इज आई माइनस माइनस प्लीज मेक श्योर दिस इज आई माइनस माइनस एंड रनिंग टेल आई इज ग्रेटर देन लोकेशन कमिंग आउट फ्रॉम द लूप ए ऑफ लोकेशन इज इक्वल टू द न्यू एलिमेंट वैल्यू एट साइज इज इक्वल टू वैल्यू एट साइज प्लस वन आई एम चेंजिंग द वैल्यू एंड आई कम आउट ऑफ दिस फंक्शन नाउ वेन आई एम गोइंग टू माई वाइड मेन again i am creating an array supposedly this time of five elements i have declared supposedly hash define max to be 5 you can define max to be anything of your choice just for simplicity i am taking it to be 5 now i am saying integer s for size which is initially 0 i am saying array of 0 is 10 size plus plus array of 1 is uh, say 
size plus plus array of two is the 500 again a size plus plus and now I'm calling an insertion at a particular or maybe I also have array of three is equal to say 450 size plus plus and I'm calling insertion at location here I'm giving the location where I want the insertion supposedly I want to insert at location one I am passing the array and you can even ask the location from the user and pass it here and I'm passing s address of s here for insertion I am also inserting at another location say two array and I'm passing the size here and finally, I'm reprinting i is equal to zero, integer i is equal to zero. i is less than psi s, i plus plus. And I print the array. Finish with my main. So if I am going to dry run this program, what will happen here is, when I'm dry running this, an array of five elements is created. So I'm having array of five elements is created. Zero, one, two, three, four indexes there. I also create S is equal to zero. So I have an S which is initially having value zero. When I'm having array of zero is equal to 10. So array of zero is equal to 10. S plus plus, not size, sorry. S plus plus, it is all S plus plus. S plus plus. So S increments to one. Then I'm having one is equal to thousand. So one pair one thousand. Again S is incremented to two. Array of two is having five hundred. S is incremented to three. Array of three is having four fifty. Again S is incremented to four. Now I'm calling insert location one. So location is one at which I want the insertion. Then I'm passing the array here. A is also referencing to this array. And address of S is passed in size. So size is another temporary variable which is pointing to S. It's a pointer variable pointing to S. So after this, if size value at size is greater than max, value at size is four. Four greater than equal to five, is false. Since this is false, I'll come here, integer element, read the element from the user. Supposedly, user enters an element 200, just for example, right? After the user has entered, i is equal to size. So I'm taking i, which is equal to value at size. So i becomes four, value at size is four. i greater than location. Now I have to check, 4 greater than 1. Location is 1. I minus minus. I will be doing A of 4 is equal to A of 4 minus 1. A of 3. So what am I doing is I am moving A of 3 into A of 4. RHS gets copied into LHS. So 450 gets copied here. I, plus, I minus 1 goes in I. Next I minus minus I becomes 3. 3 is still greater than 1 is true. A of 3 is equal to A of 3 minus 1. So I am moving A of 3 is equal to A of 3 minus 1. So 500 gets copied here. I minus minus 2 is still greater than 1. A of 2 is equal to A of 2 minus 1. So A of 2 gets the value of A of 2 minus 1. So it is replaced by 1000. I decrements to 1. 1 greater than 1 becomes false. Come out of this loop. A of location is equal to element. A of location is A of 1. This is equal to the new element. So this is replaced by 200. So this becomes my array. And I do size is equal to size. Value at size is value at size plus 1. So value at size is 4. Value at that becomes 4 plus 1 which is 5. I go back. I again call insert. Insert location to array and s. So I am I want to insert now 
at second location after the new array is available to me i want to insert at this location now insertion here when it will come it will check value at size is greater than equal to max so 5 greater than equal to 5 will be true so it will print an overflow error and it will return so when you get the final output you will be getting overflow error which is printed from the second function then it will print the entire array which will be 10 200 1000 500 and 450 so this is how insertion at the end of the array can be achieved so insertion at end beginning and at a particular location in the array is it now clear to all how the insertion in the arrays can be done 